Hello, everybody. Welcome and thank you for joining me here at the Doggy Tip Post. I'm gonna give everyone a few minutes to join me and Willie here. If you could hear me, please feel free to comment. Today, we're gonna to be talking about getting your puppy used to grooming. Uh, it is extremely hot and muggy in Chicago, which is where I live. And I'm glad it's summer, but it's been a little, <laughs> the last couple days have been a little gross. Uh, I wonder how it is everywhere else. I'm guessing it's the same, um, but summer is definitely my favorite season for sure. I am definitely a summer baby. Please let me know that you can hear me and that you could hear me well. And I'll get started in just a couple of minutes. I hope everyone is um, healthy and is staying healthy. It's been kind of a tough summer dealing with all of the things that we're dealing with. So I'm just trying to enjoy it the best we can out in the backyard as often as possible, riding bikes, just using the outdoors to our advantage right now while we can. Can every, anybody hear me? If you can, can you please comment just so I know that you can? We are going to be doing getting your puppy used to grooming. Willie is not a puppy. Yay, thank you, doggy tip post. <laughs> Um, Willie is not a puppy. I actually almost had a puppy lined up that I was really excited about and they were going out of town. So <laughs> it didn't work out. But um, Willie here is gonna be a wonderful model for everybody. So it's really just about showing the examples rather than needing an actual puppy to show you. Uh, also, make sure to feel free to comment on any other videos that you would like to see. We're always looking for ideas. I absolutely love doing these educational videos. So if there's anything that you'd love to see me do um, that you're wondering about, um, how to, um, any sort of grooming tips that you want for your pet, let us know and comment. So let's get started. For anyone that doesn't know me, my name is Valerie Partinsky. I live in Chicago, Illinois. I'm a professional groomer here in Chicago. I've been at the salon that I've been working at as an employee for 11 years now, so a really long time. I absolutely love what I do. I'm a second generation groomer, uh, so my mom was, I basically grew up in a grooming salon with my mom. Um, so I love working with animals. I have been an Andis educator for over a year now, which is wonderful because educating is one of my favorite things to do. I love teaching people. So today we wanted to talk about getting your puppy used to grooming. Uh, we have seen a huge influx of puppies coming into the grooming salon. And uh, I've been trying, I always try to educate owners as much as possible to make it a positive experience for the puppies. Every single groomer wants dogs to love walking into their grooming shop. There is nothing more rewarding than having a dog really, really excited to come in and get groomed. And that all starts with setting them up for success from the very beginning as puppies. I love working with puppies. They're, uh, they're, they're, <laughs> they're obviously not easy to work with, but they, uh, it's very rewarding in the end when they love coming in to see me. So ideally your puppy, would have been learning how to be groomed at least a little bit, the basics from your breeder, if you got your dog from a breeder. If you didn't get your dog from a breeder, that's okay, that's wonderful. So we just have a lot of work to do to teach your dogs to be used to the process. If your dogs are stressed out from the grooming process, they're not gonna enjoy grooming. So it is so important that we set them up so that they do love it. Uh, when you do get your puppy, you wanna make your, your grooming appointment right away. So uh, most puppies are gonna get their second set of shots at 10 weeks old. So it, depending on what your vet recommends, a lot of vets will recommend that you wait two weeks after that second set of shots, which means that your puppy would need to start the grooming process at 12 weeks going into a grooming shop, to safely go into a grooming shop. 
Uh, so I always recommend a lot of grooming shops are booked out into the future. So definitely, even if you're, if you know you're going to get your puppy or right when you get your puppy, set up that appointment with your groomer so that you have that set and ready to go. So you don't have to wait longer when you call at the 12 week mark and then have to extend it because we want to get them in right away. Um, so definitely do that. And what we do at our salon is we do what's called a puppies first. Now, a lot of grooming salons are going to have a different name for it. Lily, what, what are you? He's like, I want my treat. I want my treat. A lot of grooming salons are going to have a different name for it. So we call it the puppies first. It might just be an introduction for puppies or something like that. And what we do at our shop is we only do the bath blow dry, a brush out. We shave the pads, so the underneath of the pads here like this. We cut and if possible, file the nails, clean out the ears, and shave around the sanitary area. So around the rear and privates, just to clean up those areas very lightly so that your dog gets used to the feeling of everything. Now, the reason that we don't ever, we never recommend that anybody gets a full haircut on their puppy the very first grooming. And the reason why is because if you compare it to when you take your puppy to like their first training class, you're not going in thinking, I'm gonna walk in with my little three month old puppy and I'm gonna start running the agility course. No, of course not. Your puppy's gonna be frustrated. They're not gonna understand what's going on. Really, your first puppy class is about just like having your puppy stand there and like hear everything that's around them and get used to the sounds and the smells and hopefully just learn how to relax in that environment. And that's exactly what we're trying to teach a puppy in their very first grooming session. We just want them to hear everything. We want them to get used to us and recognize us at the next se session. We want to, basically we're teaching them kind of how to sit, maybe, probably not. But we just want to introduce them to the very, very basics so that they are used to it. And then we can slowly introduce them to more at the next sessions. Ideally, you want to get them groomed very often. Puppies, I usually recommend a month. If you could bring them in more often than every month, even better. If you could bring them to your groomer weekly or every two weeks, that is amazing for your puppy. Think about it if you're teaching your puppy how to sit. If you try to teach them how to sit once a month, it's gonna take a really long time. So that's also why I'm gonna show you how to do a little bit at home too, so that they can learn all of these little basics so that nothing is a surprise to them when they go into the grooming shop. So one of the number one things that most puppies, Willie is like, he's like falling asleep here. This is Willie, he's my Lakewood Terrier, and I gave him a bath before this, and I have no idea how much he needed a haircut until I blew him dry. He's very fluffy and he really needs it. Um, but one of the biggest things that puppies do have a lot of issues with, just because they're not used to it, is having their feet messed with. So I, even when my, my dog, who is not a puppy anymore, is in bed with me or sitting next to me, I play with their feet all the time. I put my fingers in between the pads. I play with their little toenails, just rubbing on them. Let's make this as happy as possible. And if you can put, give them a treat, if you're treat training, I know everybody trains just a little bit differently. If you're treat training, feel free to play with those paws and give them a treat while, they're, while you're doing it. Very, very helpful. This is a basic thing. Every single dog is going to need their feet messed with during the grooming process. And this is a great way to get them used to that. If they're on the couch with you or on the floor or wherever, Willie's just now, all oh, he's just obsessed with treats. It's like his favorite thing in the whole wide world. So you can definitely do that. Another thing, once they're really like comfortable with you playing with their feet, I recommend if you have any sort of clippers in your house. So this is a this is a Pulse Li5, and we use this on every single dog on their pads and sanitary area and stuff. Let me lower hips so you can see me a little bit better. Okay, there we go. I got them all riled up. You can't handle it with the treats. Take off the blade so that there aren't any accidents of like accidentally shaving off hair. Take off the blade 
And if you don't have any sort of clippers, that's okay. Use like an electric toothbrush. Anything that makes a little bit of noise is going to be great. And clippers sound very, very loud on camera. These clippers are actually very, very quiet. But hold up those clippers to the dog's foot and underneath the foot, just rub that on there really gently. And you can see Willie's so used to this, he doesn't even care. But a puppy will care because they're not, it feels funny. It all feels really, really funny. So just rub that on there. Maybe if they're doing really, really great, give them a treat. Or if you just train with praise, do that. Give them lots of praise. Now, if your dog is pulling back, this is just as, it, again, using your, your own training methods. Uh, some people use uh, positive reinforcements only. Um, I do let my dogs know when they are doing something wrong. So if he were pulling, I would tell him no. And then as soon as he corrected himself, I would give him a whole lot of praise to tell him what a good boy he is. And as you can see, it has worked out for him. He is absolutely wonderful for getting his feet messed with. And again, they're gonna get their nails cut. They're gonna get their calves shaved. So important. Uh, the next thing would be brushing and combing. Also so important. There is nothing worse than a little puppy coming in for its first grooming and being knotted up and it having to have to be an uncomfortable experience for them. We never want to make a puppy uncomfortable. We never want to make any dog uncomfortable, but a puppy especially. Now one of the biggest culprits for knots on your dog are going to be your collar and even worse, a harness. The hardest is your worst culprit for causing mats on your dog or puppy. So always, always take off both of those things in your home when you are done using them because especially a harness is going to go underneath the armpits, which is already a very sensitive area and it is a friction area because your dog moves there. So it, they are prone to matting in those areas anyway in the chest and belly and armpits but add in something being on there and oh man, now we've got a serious problem. So make sure that you're taking that off of them every single time you come back inside if you don't need it and brush out your puppy as often as you can. Even if it's the tiniest little section every single session, go for it. So I'm just gonna give you a little bit of tips because I often notice that a lot of puppies will come in and they look great here. Well, this is a very, very easy place to brush, right? And it's a great starting point. But the places that are going to get knots are the places that we need to brush the most, not the back where that is the least, you, you are going to get the least amount, amount of matting, uh, usually will be like around this area. So the places that you really, really wanna focus on getting your dog used to, and they can be sensitive areas, so you need to be really, really gentle and careful, and again, use your training methods. Grooming is all about training. There we go, Willie. Okay. Um, it's okay, bud. Okay, one of the areas, friction areas, are ones that you really need to focus on. This area right here is one that a lot of people don't think to, to focus on, and I actually bring my hand from underneath and push out this little area. It's a flap of skin here. And because there's an indent, it tends to get knots in there. So you wanna make sure to run that brush over that area for sure. So especially starting off, your puppy shouldn't really have any knots when you bring it home. So run your brush through it really, really gently while giving treats or using your training methods. And then you want to check with your comb. Your comb is your most important tool. You don't wanna pull out knots with your comb though. You only wanna to check to make sure that there aren't any knots with your comb. So run your comb through, make sure that you are at the skin and pulling through to make sure that it's not getting caught. And if it's not getting caught, that means that there are no knots. And you can see I'm being extremely gentle. And if we start at this point without any knots, you aren't going to have any issues maintaining it after that. But the hardest part is maintaining it because it takes work. So running the brush over, one of the very sensitive areas are the belly. So there I use the gentlest touch of all. I barely even touch them and I use really, really small strokes. 
and then check with the comb. And you can see it's not getting stuck there. So two really sensitive areas here and here. Friction points are at the ankle and up here in the tuck up area, the belly. And again, that's where your a harness would be wrapping through. So really important that you get in there. And you could do this while they're you know, laying with you in your lap to make it really fun for them. And you do not have to do the whole dog at one time when you're training them. You could just do one little section at a time and then make sure to get underneath this area here. And if you do end up picking up the foot like this, make sure that it's in a comfortable position. This might look high on camera because everything looks just a little bit higher and weirder on camera, but I'm holding it only where Willie feels comfortable. You never want to pull or lift up legs way higher than your dog would feel comfortable. So making sure to get underneath there and into that armpit area and then checking that area with the comb. And then legs. Legs are also a huge culprit, just in general. Again, we've got that friction area, the ankles. A lot of dogs get a lot of knots right here at the pad, this back pad, because you don't really feel the knots because it's around that back pad there. So just run your brush through and check with your comb. Again, using an extremely gentle touch. We don't wanna make this uncomfortable for our puppies. We wanna make it a happy time. And then I'm gonna give Willie a treat just because, just because he's so cute. And then this part is extra important. Now, in order to safely groom a puppy's face, we have to hold them somehow. We have to keep them still. Otherwise, otherwise the chances of cutting them is very, very high. So if a puppy is not used to having their face held, they're not gonna stand still for it. It's not gonna feel comfortable to them. So we have to get them used to that so that we can safely maneuver them and hold them still and feel if they're going to move before they move so that we don't end up cutting something on their face. So a couple of things that most groomers are going to do to keep your, your dog's head still and comfortable is one, hold the dog, here by the chin. So Willie does not have a lot of hair here, but you can see with a really gentle touch, because he's so used to it, I can move his head and I'm not pulling on this hair at all. I'm just holding him by it very gently so that he's used, to, he knows that he has to kind of follow my hand so that I could safely trim around this area. So if I were trimming around here and Willie weren't used to having his chin hair and he's whipping his head around, well, that's really, really unsafe for trimming around the puppy's face. So getting them used to that area and then also holding them by the muzzle. Again, I'm holding him very, very gently. I'm not squeezing in any way, shape or form, but you can see he just kind of rested his head into my, what are you, just kidding. <laughs> Willie is used to it. <laughs> Willie, you are used to it. So holding, just holding this area and then very gently brushing through the dog's face and then checking with the comb. And then just making sure that from the roots out, it just glides right through. MJ, the kind of brush to use on a pug. Uh, I would say that your best bet for a pug would be two things, because pugs actually have, they tend to have a lot of undercoat. And I'll pull out a tool that's great for that. So I would recommend two brushes for a pug. I would recommend a curry brush, which is something that they would also use on horses. And then the Andis rake, the curry brush is going to get any dead uh, top coat off that sheds all over the house. And then the Andis rake is going to get any undercoat off. And the, the Andis rake, you just, you hold the skin tight and you just kind of run it over really gently 
and that it pulls out all of that dead undercoat which is pugs have it especially like in their thigh area they, they get a lot of it so um just using making sure that you're using a really gentle touch but it works wonders on that kind of coat so you could see I didn't uh, go through, I, I usually go through Willie every single time that I uh, bathe him, but I did it before this session, so he's getting a ton out. So we've gotten through all of that. Uh, I have noticed that also a lot of puppies, uh, I usually end the grooming with cleaning their ears, and I've noticed that a lot of puppies really uh, get scared by getting their ears clean, surprisingly. You wouldn't think that it would be an area that they would get scared by, but uh, they do. So uh, when your puppy is just hanging out with you, play with their ears. Even my adult dogs, I am constantly playing with their ears. I've got my finger on the, like near the inner canal. I've got it in front. I've got it all over and just play with them all the time. Get them used to it so it's a happy time. Also, using the clippers or your tooth, your electric toothbrush or whatever you were using to get them used to it, put that near the ears because I am going to have to, as a groomer, shave around this area right here, right around the canal to allow air. So that is an area that they need to get used to that feeling right near their ears. So get them used to that. And while you're doing that, you can practice holding the head. And see, he's just kind of laying his head in. Hopefully he doesn't make a liar out of me again, but <laughs> he is a dog. No dog is perfect as much as they try. So just getting him used to that. Um, I know that it's, uh, it's not the same as actually cleaning them out, but once they're used to getting their ears handled, it's gonna be no big deal. I just rescued a poodle. Not sure how to keep the curls from matting. Um, exactly how I just showed you on Willie. You would just use a regular slicker brush. This is a wonderful, the Andis uh, slicker brush. This is a large one. And then getting um, a uh, wire, uh, a comb like this, a stainless steel comb. This is also from Andis. They are absolutely wonderful. I use them on my dogs um, every single time I wash them. Um, should a slicker brush have plastic coated tips? Uh, it depends. If your if your Shih Tzu is in like full coat and breaking coat is something that you are concerned about, then uh, you <laughs> uh, plastic coated tips are going to be great. But those, I mean, that is something that your dog would have to be brushed out like every day. Uh, if it is like a shorter hair, like Willie, or even a little bit longer than this then your regular slicker brush is totally great. If it's in any sort of haircut, basically a regular slicker brush, you want these wire because these are going to get down to the skin much better than a plastic coated brush. Uh, okay, another thing that would be really helpful is putting your dog on some sort of sturdy surface like a table, uh, obviously watch your dog, keep your hands on your dog the entire time so it's not scary. I really love, uh, these are paw mats and I really believe that every owner should have a table and a paw mat at home just so that it's like a regular part of their routine. Uh, but if, if you are just using a regular countertop, a paw mat is great because it is not going to be slippery. A lot of especially senior and puppy dogs are going to be really scared of being on a slippery surface and something like this is going to give them security and it's also got cushions so it's really really comfortable for them to stand on the table and a breeder actually uh, taught me this trick because we have a lot of dogs that are really scared with getting uh, their tails messed with so what she said is that she actually puts the puppies, when she first gets them, she puts the puppies on some sort of table, and it's okay if you're not using a table, but, and feeds the puppies there, and while they're there, let me just scooch, scooch him up, while they are eating, just gently rub the tails. Because a lot of puppies are really scared with having them touched and putting them up. Now, Willie, naturally holds his tail up like this uh, but if your puppy holds it out that's fine too but just making sure that they are really used to it because I have to brush 
on most puppies, I have to brush the underneath of their tails. So it's really important that they're used to that. We also have to clean around this area, shave around the area, sometimes remove substances that we don't want on that area, and your puppy needs to be really used to hold, having their tail held for that. So it's a really nice trick, try and feed them while, and while they're eating, just gently pet their tails. I, I am not a trainer by any means, but another thing that I have noticed when puppies come in is if they are not crate trained, it is a very, very stressful thing to have to come to a grooming shop for their first time and also have to go in a crate if they're not used to it. Crate training is not easy and I, I recognize that. Um, but from my experience, and I worked at a vet's office for several years, uh, having your dog comfortable in the crate is going to make them more adaptable to more situations where they have to be in a crate. A, for your grooming uh, appointment. So if your dog is coming to their appointments once a month and they are not used to being in a crate, now suddenly the first thing that happens in many grooming shops is that they end up going into a crate for safety reasons, it's to keep all of the dogs safe from each other. And if they're not used to that, that immediately is stressful for them. Um, also, when I worked at the vet's office, if we had to do any sort of procedure to a dog, so let's say they were getting a dental cleaning, which most dogs need all the time. If they're getting their spay or neuter, they have to be created at the animal hospital and they have to be able to know how to stay calm in a crate while they're healing and coming out of anesthesia. And the dogs that were used to being in a crate healed much faster and it was a much easier process for them. So I always recommend that puppies are taught to be comfortable in the crate. Uh, Willie, he loves his crate. It's like his favorite place in the entire world. Even if he's loose in the house, usually we will find him sleeping <laughs> in his crate with the door open. He absolutely loves it. And a couple of things that I have done to teach him to still love it is that is where he eats his food. Um, both of my dogs are fed in their crate. I also, if they're getting any sort of special treat, which is all the time because my dogs are extremely spoiled, <laughs> Uh, I put any sort of bones or chews. That's when they get their bones or chews is when they're in the crate. And also when I buy them new toys. I buy them new toys uh, more often than I would like to admit. And uh, when they get new toys, they go in their crate and they get their new toys. And then they're allowed to come out with them and do whatever they want with them. But that is just the place for special things to happen. So it's really great. It's a great thing for them to feel secure and safe in a crate for especially for grooming appointments, just to make the process a little bit easier and happier for them. Again, my name is Valerie Partinsky and I'm an Andis educator. Um, I'm just wrapping up, that was getting your puppy used to grooming. Um, I'm gonna allow for a couple more questions uh, because those are all of the little tips and tricks that I have for you today. Uh, so if you have any questions, Feel free to leave them in the comments and I will try to answer them as best that I can. And again, feel free to leave any comments on other uh, uh, live demos that you would like me to do. I'm always happy to teach people uh, if you're trying to learn anything about uh, maintaining or grooming your pet, I am happy to help. So I have Spike, how do you cut the inside flap of the ears? Um, I think you mean... Spike, I'm not sure exactly what you mean, but if you, um, there are a couple of places, depending on the pet, where we put them, where we would uh, trim them. So I always, I'm not gonna actually use clippers on Willie here, but come here, Willie. Come here, handsome man. Okay, so per every single dog that I groom, I, and <laughs> Willie's ear is extremely hairy. Like I said, he needs this haircut. Um, but I shave out all of this hair right here at the front of the ear canal, just so that that area doesn't like stay wet and ear and uh, air can get to it. Oh, okay, uh, not shaving. I, uh, I actually use the clippers for that area and I just do a little easy, I move the ear out of the way and I just 
shave right in the front of the ear right here on every single dog that I do, even if they have drop ears, because there's really no reason for all that hair to be there. It doesn't help them with anything. And then that's just going to keep it cleaner and drier. Um, so I hope that answered your question. What is my favorite Andis grooming tool? That's a great question. Um, there, it's hard because I, I have so many. I really, really, I love, I love all of their things. Um, probably my number one would be this guy because I really love the colors. I don't know if you could tell, but I have like a lot of like really brightly like purple and blues and stuff on myself. And of course I'm wearing purple, <laughs> but the galaxy, this is the, um, Andis, uh, remind me Andis for me because <laughs> my mind has gone blank. The Andis, uh, pulse. And this one, this is really, it's a really great clipper. It's got, look at him, oh my god. Um, it's got five speeds, so it can go really high and quick, and it can also go really, really low, which is great for grooming seniors and puppy dogs, because you can, you can hear, it's like, you can barely hear it at all. Um, doing a teddy bear cut on a Shih Tzu, okay, that's a great suggestion. We do so many um, Shih Tzus in a trim like that, with just a cute little round face, and, um, you could definitely show something like that. Um, I think that's about it. Thank you. Oh, I'm so sorry, Lily. So thank you so much for joining me on uh, getting your puppy used to grooming. I hope this was helpful for everyone that has a puppy or is planning on getting a puppy so that they love going to their groomers. Again, us groomers, we, <laughs> yes, the, the purple galaxy. Uh, we really, really want our clients to love coming to us. Ideally, every single dog wants to be like Willie and just sit on the table and just be loved. And that's exactly what we want to teach your puppies. Um, okay, I will answer this last question. How do you clean the junk that comes from their eyes watering or whatever? Okay, that's a great question. And actually, it was something that I planned on talk talking about and I uh, didn't write it down. So, of course, I forgot because... I can't remember anything. Um, so for around the eyes, even Willie gets, he gets, he gets a lot of buildup around his eyes even. And he doesn't even have a lot of hair around here. Um, but so he gets a bath every week and I know that that's just not possible for some people and that's totally fine. But what I do is usually what's really helpful is to make sure that the area is a little bit damp. So getting a nice little uh, rag with some warm water on it and just um, rubbing that on that area because if they're really hard and caked on there, it can be really uncomfortable for your pet. So you want to get it damp to loosen that up and then use the fine tooth end of your comb and really, really gently. And again, this is where it's so important for your dog to be used to being held here because you can see he's just totally comfortable with it. And then just lightly and he doesn't have any, but you would wanna use really, really small strokes there so that it, you're kind of slowly and gently working it out. Same thing with a dog. I just had a client come in yesterday that said that they just got a new puppy and they can't bring it in yet because he's getting his second set of shots tomorrow and he has a poopy butt. Just not a lot, but just a little bit and exact same thing. If you're going to give your dog a bath, even better. Get it all wet, get it all soapy, and get your fine tooth comb, and just kind of work it, work that, that area out really, really gently, just like I did with the eyes. And that's usually how I would start off with any sort of bath, is getting them all soapy, check and make sure that there's nothing stuck on the butt or stuck around the eyes, and using the fine tooth comb to get that all out while it's soapy and easy to come off. So once again, I'm gonna sign off. My name is Valerie Partinsky. You can follow me at Chicago Groomer on Instagram. Also Valerie Partinsky at Chicago Groomer on Facebook. Uh, also make sure to follow Andis Grooming. And if you aren't already following Doggington Post, make sure to follow because we're gonna be doing a lot more videos like this. Thank you so much for joining me. I really enjoyed that and I hope you did too. Thank you.